Good morning and welcome to St Cuthbert's online service today. I do hope you're all well and safe and that you've had an opportunity to enjoy some of the increased freedoms that we've had through the um, as we come out of lockdown, but that you've managed to keep safe and well throughout. Let's begin this morning's service with a little bit of a prayer, one that might be familiar to some of you. We are not once a week friends. We are a family of God. We are not some cosy online club. We're part of the body of Christ. We are not here by accident, but we are called to worship together. We are not just filling up some hour. Jesus wants us to know him better. We are not going through the motions. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to each one of us today and every day. So come, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now let's begin this morning's service with a time of worship.
The Parable of the Sower That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat, sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on the good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. Good morning. It's uh, good to be back with you. It seems a while since I've, I've been here. Um, last time I think I was actually in, in St Cuthbert's, uh, to be honest, I found it a bit echoey. So I'm back here in my own little little shrine at home. And before we start, I have been asked by a number of people about the pictures that often appear behind me when I am doing a little video for church. Even my sermon assessor mentioned it. He, he put a comment on, I don't understand why he had a picture of Julie Andrews behind him. Well, being honest, they're there purely for my own entertainment. I put them there because otherwise I'm just looking into a camera at a blank wall at my own face so it just gives me something to focus on um, and just that's really the only reason there today we've got Barnaby Barnaby the fruit bat uh, we, we sponsor Barnaby he lives at the Durrell Zoo in Jersey so if you're over that way you could pop in and say hello now this morning moving on to the important bit uh, we're looking at the parable of the sower now this should be a nice simple simple task something fairly fairly easy it's a story we're all familiar with and looking at the gospel jesus even gives us a nice little explanation for it so job done right that's it we've heard it what more can i add now actually we were looking at this um, a few weeks ago on our wednesday theology class that i'm doing as part of the, the reader training now we were looking at mark's gospel rather than than matthew's gospel but you know it's basically the same same story same explanation so we read through the parable we read through the the explanation and then our tutor challenged us he asked is it possible that there is more to this parable than just jesus explanation does can the parable have more than one meaning? Can there be more than one thing that we learn from it? Can we take something else from it other than what we're traditionally taught? Now, I'll warn you now that we may end up with more questions than answers this morning, but that's OK. That's fine. It's always good to leave us thinking about things. So perhaps... Let's just think about what parables are, what they're for. Now, Marcus Borg, who's a theologian, I've got one of his books, he suggests that the purpose of parables is to initiate, initiate thought by inviting the hearer of the parable into the story. So did Jesus tell parables to try and make us think? 
think about various issues, various things that we need to, to be aware of. Uh, Richard Burridge, again, a writer of Christian books, says that parables may be a riddle, not a story with a meaning. So perhaps parables are, are open stories, open narratives. They invite us in to engage with them, think about them, look at them. Is it possible for different readers to get different messages? Can that message alter over time? Can it be added to? Does it change at all? And what does all this mean for the parable of the sower? So we've had the traditional explanation. We've heard that in the, the Bible reading. Uh, the traditional explanation is that we are the sower. We are sowing the seed. We are sowing the word of God and the possible outcomes of what that might be. So as we, we met via Zoom, um, talk, just talking, discussing, just kind of open streams of consciousness, uh, these, these are some other thoughts that came out that I'd like to share with you this morning. When we look at the parable, are we being asked just to keep sowing regardless? Do we keep sowing regardless of the success of our endeavours? Now the sower in the parable, he's just casting the seed generously all over the place. He knows not all of it is falling in the right place, but he's continuing regardless. Are we being asked to do the same? The parable tells us what happens to the seed when it falls on the stony ground, when it falls among the thorn bushes, when it falls into the shallow soil. Is Jesus trying to teach to us why not everyone who hears believes the message, believes the word? And what do we do about that if we can understand why people don't believe? Is there any way or anything we can learn from that to help us when we are spreading the message? And then there's other different things in, this, in, the, in the parable. Number one, we've got the sower, which we, we've already looked at. We are the sower. Then secondly, this the second key part of the parable is the seed. So let's have a look at the seed. Can we represent the seed? Does the seed represent us? How do we react when we hear the word of God? Do we take it in? Do we nurture it? Do we let it grow inside us? Or do sometimes we hear it, but we don't really let it take root inside of us? Do we hear it and then go off and get distracted by, by something else so we forget what we've been taught, what we've just heard? Is there a challenge to us to be seed in the right place, to allow the seed in us to grow in good soil? Is there a challenge for us to focus on allowing the word to continue to grow in us? Or what about the soil? It's this third part. So we've had the sower, we've got the seed, we've got the soil. So is it a possibility that we need to think about what kind of soil we are? Are we sometimes unwittingly? Are we the thorn bushes that grow up, that reach out up, that choke off? chasing away those in whom the seed could otherwise grow through our own behaviour, our own prejudices, our own misunderstanding. Or perhaps we ourselves sometimes show a shallow example. Does this shallow behaviour and response to others not encourage them to grow? They've heard the word, but our response to them doesn't really encourage them to take it any further. Do we scare people off by expecting too much from them too soon? Or are we like manure? Do we help feed the seed and let it grow naturally? 
perhaps sometimes we're one thing, sometimes we're another. We're not the same all the time, but perhaps listening to this parable, it would help us think and focus and wonder what we are at that particular moment. So what do you think? Is there more to this parable than meets the eye? Is there more than we were initially thought or led to believe? If you'd been asked these questions on that Wednesday evening, how would you have answered them? Now, before I go, I just want to finish with a, a, a parable of my own. It's, um, I'm sure it's one that I've shared with you before. It's one I call the parable of the strawberry bush. Um, it's a true story. Um, I once had a strawberry bush. Uh, planted it in the back garden. Uh, not at the house I'm in now, at uh, the, my, my, the house we were in before this one. Um, it took root. It did well. It, it grew. It spread a little bit. But it didn't produce any strawberries. We left it there a couple of years. Again, it was doing fine. It was healthy. It just wasn't producing any fruit. So one year, just decided, tell what, we'll dig it up and we'll put it around the front instead of around the back. So we did that. Did that in, in the spring uh, and in the summer, again, it had spread, it had flourished and had a really good crop of strawberries on it that year. It produced lots of fruit. Is this the next part of the story? Do we need to think about what we do once we've put down roots, once that seed has grown in us? How do we continue to grow? How do we continue to produce fruit? Do we stay where we are? Do we stay as we are? Or could we increase our harvest? Possibly by moving elsewhere, changing where we are, what we do. And I'm not necessarily talking physically, although physically may be a, something we need to do, but spiritually, traditionally. And if this seed is planted and growing and we want fruit, we want a good harvest, how do we write the next part of the story to make sure that happens? I don't know what your thoughts are, but if you have any you'd like to share, um, you can obviously comment here on the YouTube channel. You can comment on, on the Facebook page. It'd be great to get some, some discussion going. Um, hope you have a good, good day. Um, enjoy the rest of the week um, and uh, we will see you anon. Uh, God bless. Take care. Look after yourselves. During this morning's time of prayer, I'm going to use a, um, a call and response for Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we praise you for your limitless love, for the way that Jesus taught the disciples how to pray, and for your Holy Spirit that inspires our prayers today. Help us to be open to each sign of your grace. Help us to be ready to spend time in your presence. Guide and enrich our praying as we journey ever more closely to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the environment, for the world around us. Help us to remind that we're merely custodians of your wonderful creation. Pray that your healing hand is on this earth at this time, that we may use our social isolations and our lockdowns around the world as a time for the earth to heal, to breathe, to rest. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our society. Empower us to protect the vulnerable and to stand up for those that are persecuted. To treat every human equally as a reflection of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our government and for our leaders, that they will know you in their thoughts, in their words, in their actions and their deeds. That they won't be selfish, that they will have wisdom and do the right things that they will look after the vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for Yorkshire, for Bradford, and especially for here in Rose. We pray for those on our doorstep that do not know your love. Help us to find ways and means and empower us to reach out to them. Help us to show them your kingdom and help us to be a lighthouse reflecting your love in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we want to pray for all those who are unwell, especially those who are suffered or are suffering with the coronavirus. For those who have suffered loss. For those who feel alone. For those who suffer with mental health or anxiety or depression. Lord, we just pray that they may find your peace, your an understanding of your love at this time and throughout their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So I'd just like to use the words of the Jesus shaped people prayer. Lord, we pray that you make us a Jesus shaped people. Let the priorities of Jesus be our priorities. Make us ready to reach out beyond our doors. Help us to share our stories of your love and faithfulness. Build us into a family that works together for your glory. Encourage us with always to devote ourselves to you in prayer and show us how to speak up for you in the world. Amen. Let's close our time of prayer by saying the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Thank you for joining us this morning. It's been great to be able to join with you again in, in worship and, and with, with the word. And as we, we close today and go back to our, our normal Sundays and our, our normal lives during the week, I uh, just want to share, uh, first of all, some words from, from Psalm 121. Uh, this is taken from, from the message version of the Bible. I look up to the mountains. Does my strength come from the mountains? No, my strength comes from God. God who made of heaven and earth and the mountains. He won't let you stumble. Your guardian God will not fall asleep. Not on your life. Israel's guardian will not doze or sleep. God is your guardian, right at your side, there to protect you shielding you from the sun, sheltering you from the moon. God guards you from every evil. He guards your very life. He guards you when you leave and when you return. He guards you now. He guards you always. And we'll close with the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.